Hello and welcome back to part 3. Back behind us is the lift shaft that we came down. You can see all the way up and you could probably climb it too, but we've got better things to be doing. Another familiar starting area room. There's not really anything going on here. There's just a bunch of closed doors and only one exit, so... So we'll just have a peek around and just make our way through. This room is more or less the same as the last. We've got a little nook over here with not really anything in it. Just some additional geometry to liven the place up. Our real destination is over here. We've got an open door that we can go through, but it's actually a better idea to go into the vent instead. And there's the reason why. There isn't really anything worth going down the tunnel for. I'm just going to kill these guys out of the sake that they're there. Whenever that's done, we'll head into the vent. In coming down the lift shafts, we seem to have positioned ourselves as far away from the actual Rebel Headquarters as possible. We've got ourselves a hell of a lot of trekking to do. In fact, this level is so large, I've had to cut it into two and it becomes this part and the final one. This partially open vent can't be opened any further and it leads to the corridor that we just cleared out so we'll head back and get rid of those other guys that we saw. Sadly there's not a lot of health to pick up so we're gonna have to be as patient as we can. It does give us a chance to enjoy some of the nice music. The music itself was unique per level up until we left Earth and then once we got to Mars it started to repeat them again and in my opinion the game actually ends playing the best music that it has. And we could probably make that jump if we jumped off to the side but uh, I'm not going to risk it. There's bound to be a better way around. This area of the base seems to be where the soldiers were housed, we got plenty of bunk beds and lockers knocking around. And each of the separate little barracks rooms has some kind of windowy thing, uh, which is handy for us because that's how we get between them. I think it's supposed to be a vent, but really, why would you have a ventilation panel between rooms like that? It doesn't make any sense. This asshole has a tendency to fire a grenade, so we'll just sneak up on him since I know he's there in advance. It appears that there were some rebel guys just sitting about in the barracks, maybe they were trying to barricade themselves in, but unfortunately they got overrun. Well, well, this came out in the other end of the chasm. Oh, that's handy for us. Bastard. The reinforcements are on the way. You can tell I'm still trying to play conservatively, but really it's not helping me all that much. I do have to step out in order to fire off a shot, but they always manage to fire off a shot or two as well. So really it becomes a game of attrition and you really have to be looking for the health packs. No matter where they are, if they're hidden or not, you, you really have to search everywhere to find them. It's not really so much a problem of ammo at this point because, well, you can always pick it up from the guys you kill, it doesn't take much to kill them, it's just trying to minimise the damage you take from them that's the problem. 
this cavern is something which we'll be seeing more of later on. It's a dead end, it doesn't lead anywhere except to um, just a kind of a little firefight that you, you can't take part in but you can kind of listen to. It's another redundant little touch which is always welcome. Anyway, it's probably time that we headed back and tried to help those rebels we saw getting shot at. Uh, something tells me they probably haven't fared too well. The hole in the wall that we're shooting through is um, quite literally a hole in the wall. It's been blasted open and I think it's quite a cool touch. We'll wait for him behind the corner. And the same thing can be said for this hole as well, a much bigger one. It's not obvious who actually made the hole, it could be the Mars Court guys just kind of blasting through wherever they can, but it may as well have just been done by the rebels themselves and trying to clear some access points whenever they moved in after the Russians left. It's not immediately obvious, but above us and to the left are two guys who are throwing down grenades. They will throw them down infinitely, so we kind of need to take them out as soon as we can. Unfortunately, that means getting close, and because grenades are very difficult to actually spot, it's a, a lot of trouble. It also doesn't help that around the corner a couple of guys spawn, and we have to take care of them as well. through some of this machinery and through the door we found some evidence of the rebels again. Here we've got a what appear to be, well at least in, in my eyes anyway, is some kind of computer bank. Also just heard the sounds of conflict as well, so either Mars Corp or the rebels are dead now. The fight was happening on the other side of this wall and there's no way directly through, so we're going to have to find another way to get past. Luckily enough, it's fairly obvious, up the vent shaft and through there. Naturally, of course, I'm misled by the prospect of something interesting being over here, but there isn't. Here's a surprise, the rebels actually won the fight for once. It may be difficult to make out, but the rebels are stood behind these concrete blocks and across the way are where the enemy were. And in between is a big pit of water and I'm guessing that's probably why the rebels won. They had some cover but the Mars Corps guys didn't and there was no way for them to get over the pool of water to get at the rebels themselves. The pit itself has nothing in it except for the water itself. We've got some debris down at the bottom and a light for some reason. It must be some kind of sinkhole that happened here, just to kind of drop down like that. I think this is actually the only water in these levels and the final bit of water in the entire game. So it was nice to see, it's an effect I'm quite fond of and I'll be sad to see it go. I'm guessing they wanted to remind us of it before we finally left the game for good. We had the option of avoiding that swim altogether, if we hadn't dropped down and said hello to the rebels we could have just carried along the structures on the ceiling. Eventually it all leads here and we just gotta go forwards and around this corner. Get him. Yeah, she really don't want to stick around for long. We've got guys with grenade launchers and two exoskeletons there so we need to kind of run away. Unfortunately that kind of places us in the same position that the Mars Corp guys were in when they were facing the rebels. Eventually these guys are gonna come around the corner and we've got nowhere to hide. We could jump into the pit and climb back over there, but generally I don't do that. I like to take these guys on alone. The exoskeletons are still very slow, so we've got plenty of time to prepare ourselves now that me and Grunts are dead.
think one of them stuck and the other ones then trapped behind it. Oh, well, uh, that's usually quite a difficult fight. It's just a shame that it just kind of crapped out in itself in the end. Some excellent pathfinding there. This area has always been a little strange for me. At the end here we've got a door that we can't open, but we've got a machine sitting beside it with what looks to be a cable running under the door. We can activate the machine and we can watch it charge up and it leads into this cutscene. assume that that machine is going to be knocking a hole in the ground that we'll need to get through but we haven't actually seen that room before we haven't come across it yet it's kind of a, a strange lead-in to what we're going to be finding later on anyway the machine that we activated didn't actually open the door or anything like that hidden behind the machine is a hole in the wall which was there the whole time so in theory we could have skipped this machine entirely run all the way down to where that machine had activated was and then realized that we needed to turn it on somehow and then have to run all the way back but I've never actually had to do that Whenever I get to this area, I've just found no way through and hit the switch just because that's all I could find. And then after that, I didn't do anything, I just kind of looked around a bit harder and found a hole in the wall. A group on the run no way out of this corridor, so we're going to be taking this weird maintenance access tunnel here. Why they couldn't have just had the overrunning pipe in one of the main corridors, I don't know. But it leads us through to the adjacent corridor. In the corridor itself, we've got some more barrack rooms, but these ones don't have any beds or lockers or anything inside. They're all pretty barren. Makes me think that the previous barks that we saw weren't really housing soldiers of any kind, it was actually just there for the maintenance workers who were building the base. Out in the main corridor we've got some giant piece of something blocking our way, so we're gonna have to search these bark rooms to find another way around. Since all of the rooms are empty, there's nothing interesting to talk about, so at least listen to some of the music. Later note, some choice samples of music from Chaser are available at the cauldron.sk developer website. Here's an interesting set piece that doesn't quite work so well. It only really works if you fail it a few times, but if you're seeing it done successfully, then really it's not really all that exhilarating. Over here we've got a wire, and if we follow it, it leads to a closed door, so we could probably assume it leads to the machine that we switched on. We've got a lift here. And there's not really anything over here except for a vent shaft that isn't actually connected to anything. Well, if we follow the wire, it'll probably lead us to that big machine that we saw in the cutscene. Uh, oh, no. Oh, uh oh, looks like someone's left us a present. You can hear them scampering off in the vent, so we should probably scamper as well. Here's your tip, always remember to close this door behind you. As I'd said, not really all that exhilarating. If you leave the door open, or if you're still standing outside, a big explosion goes off and just basically kills you. Once we step out, everything's all dark, it's destroyed all of the lights that we're on, nothing's really blackened or anything like that, but otherwise the danger has passed and we can make our way forwards, so just follow the cable and this time the gate won't close in our face so we can sneak under and carry on. plenty of grenades and if they're going to use them we might as well use them too. I'm 
not exactly sure what this structure is meant to be. Um, this lower walkway that we travel on is entirely redundant. There's nothing here. And we might as well just not have it at all, but it's just there for decoration. The structure doesn't really make any sense. Whenever we look out over the balcony here, it just kind of looks out onto a cavern. It feels like something where you'd be watching from, but it, it, again, it doesn't really make any sense. We've got some guys to kill down at the end of the corridor. We'll eventually take care of them. But where we actually want to go is underneath us. There's a, an entranceway under there where we have to get access to. I'm trying to bait them towards the barrel, but they don't appear to be biting. This gateway, I think, is an area from the very start of the level. The game likes to do that a fair bit in these particular levels. It's just a kind of a fuck you whenever you get to the other side of it and realise that you haven't travelled very far at all. I died at this section a lot, so you'll notice that I'm going in very much prepared. See that one explosion took off almost all of my health, and the fact that they're firing in three round explosive bursts doesn't help things at all. We can't really stand next to a wall because the splash damage will kill us, neither can we stand out in the open because the people with bullet weapons will just slaughter us that way. It's pretty difficult to win, you do have to kind of strike first and then run away whenever things get difficult. Well, the fight is over and we can go back to following this cable again. Now we're actually finally in the room where it leads to. At the very end here we've got the third one of these machines that has fallen through the ground. It's actually collapsed the ceiling in and itself as well. But before we drop down, I'll do a little bit of backtracking back to the cavern just to show you that it is actually a dead end. make our way back and drop down the hole. I'm fond of the little touch where the cable is still actually going down into the pit attached to the big machine. This is one of those places where you do take damage falling, or at least that I found that there's no way to avoid it, but luckily we've got full health so it shouldn't be too much trouble. This seems to be the only way forward, so we'll just follow that back up, I guess. It's all getting to the point where we just really have no idea where we're going. We're just pushing forwards and hopefully it'll take us where we need to go. A fight happening. Let's see if we can lend a hand. Or maybe not. Let's just stay back and launch grenades until they all die. The Rebels won once again, and we've got one survivor left over. This particular guy, I think this is the only time we ever see him in the game. At least alive, anyway. The model appears to be that of the police guys from Montag City way back at the start of the game, except with a dusty brown reskin. Sadly, he doesn't follow us, so we'll just leave behind and carry on. Here's another one of those strange structures that appear to be built to overlook something that isn't there. Closed door that way and an open door this way, so we'll follow that. I'm not sure if we're meant to be following cables anymore. It's just a, a theme that seems to carry on. I don't know if it's actually got any purpose to it anymore. A bunch of guys here who are taking no shit from me at all. 
And that one guy managed to fucking almost destroy me. So back to get the health and then, well unfortunately while we're down here they do end up following us through and it makes our lives a little bit more difficult. Head is a section of this level which I honestly believe should have been given its own level. At this point we've played about 20 minutes of this level and that's excluding all of the deaths that I've had so it's probably somewhere near about 40 minutes. And by this point you really do need a change but we're about to get into a section which is absolutely massive and it's so big and takes so long to do that I won't actually finish it in all of this episode. I'll only get a short distance of the way in and then I'll have to stop and it'll be continued in the next episode. We're actually out of the caverns and things like that and we're into a properly built up area and it appears to be the garages section. We don't really see it here but there's a lift structure that actually seems to bring all the vehicles down. Why we couldn't have taken that lift in the first place and skipped a bunch of levels I don't know but it appears that Mars Corp found it and driven a load of stuff down here. Why exactly they needed to drive down some vehicles, I'm not sure. I mean, they could have just put the guys on the lift, but instead they put them in vehicles and drove them down here. The fortunate consequence of that is that the vehicles have a fucking turd on top of them, so we have that to deal with. Supplies with the ceiling mounted turrets. We have to take advantage of the wind up to get in some shots and then hide until it stops shooting and winds down again. I keep expecting some guys to show up around this car, but they never actually do. The guard itself seems to be clear, but you'll notice that there's an upper section. No doubt we'll be getting there reasonably soon. Down into the central span again, we've got an open door down here that leads into some kind of structure that will no doubt take us up high enough to get to the upper levels of the car park. Have a look up here and find that it's blocked off so it appears to be the only way we need to go but that will have to wait until the next and final episode of chaser so i will see you then <laughs>